Right, hello everybody. Um, <clears throat> glad you could join us. Uh, my name is Rick Dearman, and I'm going to cover the listening and reading method for learning uh, languages. And i got to say, this is probably the first presentation I've done at a polyglot gathering without a hangover, so we'll see how that goes. Um, uh, but let's, let's get into it. Um, about me first, I've studied various languages with varying degrees of failure. Uh, I'm a great example of a poor language learner, and I'm the sort of poster boy for if this idiot can do it, anybody can. Um, and I'm always looking for a better way, you know, the one true way to learn a language. Uh, I'm still looking, I haven't found it, but uh, hopefully one day uh, I'll be able to, to share that with you after I find it. But today we'll talk about listening and reading, and I wonder if you'd believe me if I told you somebody could go from uh, an A1 to a B1 with just 30 hours of reading books. Um, because it can happen, and with the li listening and reading method I'm going to show you today, uh, it has happened, and I'll give you an example during the presentation of a lady who did just that. She went from A1 to B1 with just 30 hours of work, which I think is pretty remarkable. So, listening and reading, what is it? Well, basically, uh, it's reading in your native language or a, or a primary language for you and listening in the target language. You also read in the target language and listen in the target language and you do some reading, um, target listening, uh, read in the target while listening in the native language. So there are basically four steps to listening and reading. You read first in your uh, L1 or your primary language. So normally that's your native language. So for me, it'd be English. But uh, if, if you were learning uh, sort of bootstrapping from another language, it might be uh, a, a really solid language that you know, like Spanish to Polish or something like that. But anyway, so the first one is to familiarize yourself uh, by reading the content and understanding the content of what you're going to start with. Then you listen uh, in the target language, your L2, and you read in your L2, uh, and then you move on to step three, which is the heart of it. Uh, you listen in the target language, and you read in the, your native language or your primary language in order to get instantaneous uh, sort of translations. And you basically lather, rinse, and repeat step three uh, a number of times until you've effectively memorized the content, really. So, who invented this? How did it come about? Well, to be honest, the first person to have introduced it probably on the internet was uh, at howtolearnanylanguage.com, which is one of the original forums that a, a large number of people here uh, were members of or have been members of in the past. Now, Lydia McAvoy mentioned in her talk that she used reading and audio together when she was learning Spanish. I uh, watched uh, Luca, who said, you know, listen and read books. Uh, so, so many people use this method, but this individual on howtolearnanylanguage.com basically gave it a name. Um, so, there are a number of different ways that you can do this. Uh, you can use... Um, podcasts with transcriptions or audiobooks or films with transcriptions, etc. But the primary way to do it is with books, uh, novels mainly, because you get a significant amount of exposure. So what are the benefits of doing this listening and reading method? So the first thing is you get a huge, massive, epic exposure in a short amount of time to a language when you start now. Uh, you're using content you already know or you have familiarized yourself when you when you did your first reading or first read through. Uh, you're learning porosity and uh, pronunciation, etc. while listening to a native speaker, the narrator of the audiobook. Um, and, and it basically helps you increase your listening comprehension. But it also helps you know with reading comprehension and uh, spelling recognition and grammar and huge amounts of benefits that you'll get from this. Now, what evidence is there or what proof is there that this works? Well, listening and reading creates what people call a din in the head. So Elizabeth Barber, as you can all read here, uh, introduced this as a linguistics community. 
uh, then in the head is where you basically the the target language starts popping out uh, in your in your mind. The thoughts just keep popping and buzzing about in your head as you're going about your daily business, and it's because you've got this din in the head that it's more or less just the 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 start of the learning process, and it's your brain trying to work these new words in into your and fit it into your mental uh, cage, basically. Now, Krashen uh, speculated that den in the head is a sign of language acquisition, and, and various studies have shown that the din is an actual real phenomenon. And the more frequently you're using and hearing the language, the more this din in the head or buzzing of the language begins to affect you. Now, this is exactly what the listening and reading method is trying to accomplish, and, it, and, it, and basically trying to force the language into your head uh, and try and get this din going in your in your mind. Now, I'm going to give you some anecdotal evidence of, of the effectiveness of this, and, and I run a forum that's free to use for anybody. I'm the administrator there. It's the forum that took over from howtolearnanylanguage.com. Um, and we have about 12,000 members, and we're all language geeks, and we all try different experiments, and we do all kinds of different stuff. Um, we have lists of resources for languages. We do challenges like the super challenge, which is to read 100 books uh, and watch 100 films. Uh, 365 challenge, like do a half hour of study every day consistently. We have logs of people who record what they're doing and their output. We have questions and answer answer sessions, and it's all free. And we don't even have advertisements. So if it's if you're looking for for a place to discuss languages, 365 days a year rather than just the, the polyglot gathering, uh, you're welcome to come meet us there. But what I want to talk to you about is we do some rather strange experiments sometimes on the forum. People, uh, you know, basically test theories uh, on themselves or. Sometimes we do have a group effort, but uh, we had a member called Yuri, and um, she decided to test the listening and reading method. Now, uh, she decided that she was going to go about this, you know, in a fairly systematic way. She would take a test prior to actually uh, starting, and she would work out. Uh, collect the time that she did, what she did, and how she did it, and basically report on the results <coughs> on the form later. So in her notes, she said that uh, the A2 reading was mostly because of the related Romance languages and the cognate help that she got when she took the test at the uh, Dai Lang test at uh, University of Lancaster, uh, Lancaster, sorry, University. Um, now, she logged all of her time while she was doing this. She did 30 hours in total, with a half an hour of that being grammar work. And she did it over the course of 38 days. She listened to Harry Potter books because, as she said, she's a, she's a Harry Potter super fan. And the benefit of doing this uh, for her was the instantaneous translation aspect of, you know, uh, listening in the native language and uh, sorry, in the target language and, and reading along in your native language to get the translations. So at the end of her experiment, um, she had managed to increase from an A1 level in listening to a B1 level, and she increased from an A2 in reading to B2. So this was, for her, uh, you know, a significant increase in her abilities in a language which she was relatively unknown when she started. Now, I'll let you read what she wrote uh, on the forum when she posted her results, but basically as a summary, you know, she was quite happy with the results. Um, it was an enjoyable and efficient method, uh, although she admits that other methods might be more efficient, but, you know, this was enjoyable to do, and so it wasn't drudgery, basically. Uh, it was much more enjoyable than textbook work, but had comparable results. Now, she did the basic uh, listening and reading steps, although I think she skipped out um, some of the familiarization steps simply because she already, as you know, she said, a super fan of Harry Potter. Therefore, she didn't really need to understand the content anymore. She'd, she'd already read it numerous times. 
So, but there are, I think, a couple of things she could have done which might have helped improve her scoring, and I'll go through that later as a sort of a improvements to the listening and reading. But Yuri had some very, very good results, and if you're watching uh, tonight, because I know she comes to a lot of these uh, polygon gatherings, um, thank you for letting me uh, use your results. Um, then the other one I'd like to go through uh, is myself. Now, having watched a lot about uh, listening and reading and also reading about it on the forum and the results like Yuri, etc. I decided that maybe I could use this to to sort of get through my intermediate doldrums um, because basically, <coughs> excuse me, um, I'm struggling to get past and into the sea levels as most people uh, do. Uh, it's a long, hard slog through the intermediate levels and I thought, Ah, this works so well for her, perhaps it'll work for me to get me past uh, this intermediate level. So I decided uh, I was going to try the listening and reading intermediate level. Now, what I decided I was going to do was I would just do the reading in uh, my native English and I would do the listening in Italian. I didn't bother with the listening and reading uh, familiarization piece. I'd already, the books I read, I'd already read before, so I was already familiar with it. And I didn't bother with the listen in the target language, in my case, Italian, and read in Italian. Um, because I'm not a beginner. I'm already used to the porosity. I'm used to annotation. I'm used to the spelling. I understand most of the grammar. So I didn't think that was a worthwhile step for me. In hindsight, it probably would have been a good idea, but I decided I wasn't going to do it uh, because I was already familiar with it. So I did listening and reading for 45 hours and 57 minutes, so basically 50, uh, sorry, 46 hours over the course of five weeks um, and averaging about two and a bit hours a day. Now, I only did this during weekdays because at the time I was uh, working away from home and I was staying at a hotel four nights a week, so I decided it was the perfect opportunity to try and do this uh, because I was effectively had uh, some time alone to do it. Now, the results, I'm, I think you may be surprised. I went from B2 to B2 and from B2 in reading to B2. So basically no change whatsoever. Now, you're probably uh, looking at me right now and thinking, uh, Rick, why am I listening to you? Because you've got no results from here and uh, it was a waste of time, so why are you even telling me about this? But in fact, it wasn't really a waste of time, but there were things that I did wrong and I think as an intermediate learner, you have to change listening and reading methodology slightly to, to get an improvement. So where did I go wrong? Well, basically, I like to call it nano is where I went wrong. All my problems are nano, basically. Um, not enough time per session. So most of the times I saw really benefits or dent in the head is when I was actually using this um, for more than three hours. So when I, would, when I did three or four hour sessions, um, you know, I, I, I felt more intact, uh, more dent in the head, more... Um, sort of comprehension increasing. Uh, and admittedly, there were a few days where I just didn't bother because I was tired from work. So, um, and I'd skipped a, a day or so. Now, the A portion of nano is I always found myself reading ahead. So when you're doing listening and reading, it's very difficult because you understand the, what you're reading in your native language, not to get ahead of the narrator who's going very, very slowly because obviously people can normally read faster than they can speak, and um, narrators tend to speak slowly anyway. Um, so it's very difficult not to get ahead. You can do it with a, with a lot of practice, and for, trust me, after 45 hours I had a lot of practice, but um, that is one of the problems I had, the racing ahead. So not testing myself before moving on to another book was a problem. So what happens here is, although I've read the book uh, and I did a couple passes of it, I didn't test myself on the book. And the way that you should test yourself is to simply listen to it audio only. Now that seems obvious, but 
this is a step that I didn't do. And I think this is where I went wrong because it would have told me that I wasn't comprehending everything. I was using the, uh, the text as a crutch too, too often. So always testing myself would have been a much better way uh, before I moved on in order to, so that I could repeat the book again and again and again to get that final bit of comprehension in. Not having progressively harder materials. So basically I went straight in at the deep end with one of the hardest books I could possibly find rather than ramping up. So I should have ramped up my comprehension materials from easier to progressively harder material. Um, so for whatever reason, I just because of the material I, I had, because obviously I don't have uh, a lot of material in as far as audiobooks go, I had to, to make do with what I had. And, you know, there, I, there you go. Um, and then the O was only listening. So in addition to just testing yourself by only listening, I could have improved better if I'd have done some transcription work. Um, so basically listening only to it, uh, the audio, and trying to write down what it was they were saying. And then I've got the book. Um, if you have the book in the target language as well, then you can obviously test your um, transcription. So I didn't actually gain as far as the test uh, went, but I felt when I watched Italian television shows that I did understand more. Uh, it was easier for me to follow the plot. Uh, I didn't have a problem with the speed of the native speakers, um, but it just wasn't enough to pull me into the category of C1 uh, as far as um, you know a, a, a test goes. And the other problem is, of course, as we, we all know, the improvements in the beginning stage are really easy. You, you leap forward leaps and bounds. You learn new vocabulary every day, and it's, and it's easy, and it's great. But that all sort of slows down into a sort of a, a mucky molasses doldrum uh, when you hit intermediate level. You still get the gains, but they're much slower to materialize. And so um, it was just, it was just there, there were gains for me. I did see them. In, in myself, I could understand more, I could comprehend more at speed, but, you know, as far as the test goes, didn't show anything. So some of the things I'd recommend for intermediate users like me, and if I decide I was going to do this again, with some small changes, I think I could see more improvements. And I could, and I could see more improvements both for beginners and intermediate uh, users of the method. So if Yuri started to do this again, I think some of the changes that I'm going to suggest might help her as well. So basically, well, how do you do listening and reading? Well, you obviously need a target language book, uh, a native language book, and a target language audio. Now, it's nice to have a native language audiobook as well. And it's also nice, and I mean really nice, if you can uh, have your texts as parallel text. So in my example, if I had English on the left and Italian on the right, and I'm listening to Italian, that would have been perfect because I would have seen both languages side by sides with all of the spellings. But uh, I didn't have that nice to have. I, I struggled with what I did. Uh, I think if you could do eight to 12 hour sessions at a weekend, that would be amazing. You would really start to see it then in the head. But anything over four hours would be OK, uh, because that's when I started to see in my head the most useful uh, sort of din happening. Uh, but if you could do eight or 12 hours at a weekend, I mean, you're basically talking full immersion for a couple of days. Um, and, you know, that's well worth it. And it's a lot cheaper to buy audiobooks than you know to fly off, uh, and now you can't fly off anyway uh, to to, uh, to practice your target language. Now, uh, Yuri used Harry Potter because she was familiar with it. She was a super fan, so she didn't do step one. I didn't do step one because the books I uh, was using I had read before in English as well. Um, she did do the L two uh, audio and reading part in order to get word boundaries and porosity and things like that. I didn't because I felt that I didn't need to. 
uh, when I did the intermediate bit. But it does help you with porosity, punctuation, spelling, word breaks, and all that. So it is worthwhile to do, especially if you're a beginner. Then step three is the meat of it. it it's difficult to do, and it's hard to keep in sync, as I mentioned before. And it's very, very, very hard not to read ahead, but you mustn't. You must carry on reading the translation while you're listening. And then step four, you just repeat this again until you understand the book. Now, remember, what you're actually trying to do here is listen to the language in the audiobook. And the reading is to help you, tr your brain translate what you're hearing in order to get comprehensible input. You're, you're, the point here is not to read the book in your native language. The point is to try and listen to the book in your ear whilst, you know, occasionally glancing down and trying to, you know, translate the, the odd word that you don't know. So that is the basics of the technique. Now, some suggestions for improvements would be, uh, you know, I've written here shadowing. So just use your mouth to say the words that you're hearing. And then the other thing is write out the translation from L1 into L2. And this is why I said it would in the resources, it's good to have the target language book physically the text as well. So you take the, I don't know, short chapter or a paragraph, you know, a first paragraph of chapter two, and you take your language, in my case, English, and you translate that into Italian, and then you compare it to the actual Italian and see how well you did. So that, I think, would be a very useful exercise. Now, recently, uh, one of the speakers, uh, Job Up Upmeyer, I believe, I, I don't know, hopefully I've pronounced your name correctly, and his talk about transcription of movies, the benefits of this uh, comes out with movie transcription as well. So to transcribe the audio you're hearing uh, and make sure you're comprehending what you hear and not just reading in your language, uh, in your native language, is very, very, very helpful. And then spend some time uh, learning about the language, i.e. grammar and things like that, is also very, very useful. And for intermediate users, as always, you need more hours. you got to put in more time because you're not going to see the benefits straight away that a beginner would. You have to work a bit harder to get what you want. Now, some of the suggestions um, also include a, a short segment of audio. Uh, put it on repeat and basically repeat after the speaker to do phonics study. So this is, as Luke has said, uh, trying to help you improve your pronunciation uh, while you're doing it. Um, you really need to be doing this in a compressed time period. So do a lot in a, in a little amount of time in order to get the, the din in the head. And when, you, when you've done your sort of third or fourth pass of this book, right, you you, the narrator is crawling along really slow. And I found it very useful to have, um, I used a VLC player where I could speed it up to, um, you know, one and a half, you know, 1.75 times the speed. So, cause I still understand what they're saying. I'm still reading along, but it's just that the narrator is speaking so slowly that, you know, it's just taking too long. And as I didn't do, try and get progressively more uh, difficult materials as you go along. Now, if you'd like to try listening and reading, there's a lot. The part of the problem I had was getting materials. Now, you can get a lot of quality audio books at LibriVox where native speakers have read, um, you know, uh, um, public domain books. So, for example, if you like Jules Verne, you can get the whole of that in French, say. So, you know, um, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea or whatever. It's, it's in French. You can have it in French, etc. So I would look there first for a lot of free audio because you get the, the you can get the, the target language audio, you can get the target language uh, text and the native language text there as well. Audacity is a useful piece of software for chopping up um, audio. Workbook audio is a very, when, when you want to repeat a sentence, this is an extremely good um, piece of software. Again, this is free, but it's only on Windows and Android. And uh, if you want to do transcription, you can do um, O Transcribe, which is basically a web page, but it'll read a, a, an audio segment off your computer and allow you to type in what you're hearing so that you basically can do a transcription. And it'll let you pause and repeat and go back and forth and, and, and slow things down. And it's a very good piece of software for, for transcriptions. So. Um, 
basically, that's it in a nutshell. I know it's not a long presentation, and I'm quite happy to take a load of questions. But uh, if you have some questions, I think I've got some here. So how do you balance this type of learning with speaking and listening skills? Right. I didn't, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, part of the improvements I'm saying would allow you to, to improve uh, some speaking. So if you're, if you're talking or shadowing after the native speaker uh, following along the audio. But the listening skill, this is core of listening skills. You're trying to listen to what they're saying. That's why I'm saying you shouldn't be trying to read uh, the reading is just to glance down and, and do a quick translation of a word you didn't quite pick up or a sentence you didn't quite understand or even a whole paragraph where you're a bit hazy. Um, but it is all about listening. It, this this skill is, is all about listening comprehension, which is uh, one of my biggest bugbears and one of the reasons that I decided to um, have, a, have a go at it. Uh, the next one is, what are some online resources for listening and reading? Well, I gave you some uh, for Levervox, but honestly, you don't really need anything other than an audio book and a physical book if you can get a hold of it. So, um, you know, in Audible from, from Amazon.com, uh, you know, you can pay a, a small fee. And if you can get popular books, you're you know, like Harry Potter, they're very, very likely to be translated into multiple languages and multiple audiobooks. So you would be able to get for, for Harry Potter or The Hobbit or some of the others, um, you know, uh, uh, that sort of resources. But as I say, Levervox is free. Uh, Project Gutenberg has some free stuff. And if you check out some of the, um, the software I, I mentioned earlier, uh, they're very useful. Uh, the next one is doing listening and reading for an hour a day enough to master a language on the long term? No, not really. Um, you, you, it's, well, yes and no. It's not enough to get the din in the head thing going. It's not enough to, to really reinforce uh, what, you, what you want to do. This method really it jump starts your language journey. Uh, but it's not the be all and end all. You are still going to need to study some grammar. You're still going to need to do a course book. You know, it, this is a, a very good, very solid supplement. But it isn't going to. It isn't. It isn't the one true method that I keep searching for. Um, so uh, I don't think an hour enough a day. I think two or three in a compressed amount of uh, time um, is best. So. If I start reading Harry Potter in Swedish, should I become a B2? I'm already, I'm a really beginner in speech. Well, uh, evidence says yes, but it depends on how much work you're willing to put into it. So uh, the lady did it for Italian. She um, started with next to no uh, knowledge of Italian whatsoever. However, she did have the cognate uh, advantage, which I don't know if you know any uh, languages related to Swedish. So I don't know if you're going to get a cognate to discount, a cognate discount rather. Um, but I really think that if you knuckled down and did this for, you know, 40 some hours, you are going to see a significant benefit in your Swedish. Uh, does this also work with languages with different sentence structures? Uh, English SRV intern. Well, uh, I didn't mention it, but we did have on the forum a fellow who used this method for Mandarin Chinese. So he did use it uh, with a, a completely different script. Now, Chinese does have the same sentence structure, more or less, than English. Uh, so subject, verb, object. Um, I don't know of anybody who view, has used it for Chinese. But if you're willing to experiment and tell me, I'd be really interested in finding out. Um, but I think it probably would, because what you're trying to accomplish is listening comprehension while getting a quick uh, cheat sheet, effectively, uh, while you're doing it. Uh, does this method improve your speaking skill? Well, no, uh, to be honest. Unless you use the improvements where you're going to uh, repeat after the native speaker uh, on a loop to, to fix your pronunciation and to actually shadow and pronounce after the narrator of the book, then it's not. But if you did do those extra steps, then yes, I believe it would. What is happening? Oh, okay. Uh, right. 
it, yeah, sorry, it's an abbreviation we all use on our form. It's actually how hyphen to hyphen learn hyphen a hyphen language hyphen dot com. But don't bother going there because there's very few people uh, actually access that site now. Most people have moved over to our new forum, forum dot language hyphen learners dot com. So if you're going to go there, um, go there first, and then people can point you to the appropriate resources and things. Why did you? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so again, uh, 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 this is this is what happens when you administer a, a language forum. You get sucked into all kinds of weird stuff. Um, so uh, we we started to do check as a as a sort of a group learning system because we were all going to Bratislava to go to the polyglot gathering. Finnish was uh, somebody decided that Finnish was really hard and we should all try and have a go at it and. It was, uh, I think the group was called Finish with Extra Pain, uh, as, a, as opposed to the Asamil, you know, with ease or without pain type thing. Uh, Setswana was a challenge that came up on our forum. Uh, one, of the, one of the members challenged people to, to learn a language with only free and legal resources that you could get off of the internet. So uh, Setswana, I was learning from Peace Corps um, material that I could download off the internet, uh, things from the University of Botswana, listening to internet radio, etc. So it's basically it started out as a challenge to to try and see what you could learn uh, just with materials that you can get free and legally on the internet with no sort of encumbrance. So uh, they didn't. I the languages chose me. I didn't really choose them to be honest. Uh, is it worth doing for 34 minutes? Not really. Uh, I think the the whole point of this is to do a massive exposure, epic exposure, and in a compressed time period to try and jumpstart the the you know the din in the head uh, of language learning. So it, it's possible that it's useful, um, but I suspect that you really need more time than 40 minutes a day. Translation is different from the original. Yeah, um, but this, uh, sorry, translation can really differ from the original. Original would it would a dictionary not be useful than a book in a native language? Yes, it would. But um, the point is, you're not trying to. You don't need an exact translation of the book. You're what you're. You're only using the book to try and help you uh, comprehend what you're listening to. So. I think it was Dr. Krashen who said it was, uh, you know, you want comprehension I plus one, you know, just a little bit harder than what you already understand. And this is what this is trying to give you. So if you're not comprehending what you're hearing, you can look down and get the gist of it. Even if it's not an exact translation, you know more or less what, what's going on in the book. You know, oh, this guy's got a gun and he's going to shoot somebody. So, you know, you, you, you're you using it really to try and uh, quickly and easily um, get the gist of what's happening. It's just, you don't really need an exact translation when you're doing it. Right, what would you suggest for more busy people who can't spend four hours a day doing listening and reading? Now, uh, Yuri, as I pointed out, uh, she works for a living and sh her total 30 hours was done on the weekends. So she only did this during the weekends. She didn't, uh, I, I did it during weekdays because I was away. Uh, and obviously I don't have that sort of time either. You know, that was an extraordinary uh, circumstance where I'd get that sort of time in a day. Um, most people can carve out some time at the weekends. And if you, but if you can do three hours a few times a week, I still think you'll, you'll see a benefit. Do you have a way to sort books you're going to read by difficulty. Uh, well, you can start with uh, graded readers. That would be my first recommendation. The other one, uh, which is a sort of a off the cuff way to do it, is to just open the book randomly at a page and try and work out what percentage of words on that page you know, and then sort them that way. So if you open a book and you you sort of recognize five percent of that book and you recognize 10% of this book, well, start with the 10% book and move on to the 5% book. But yeah, it's a very rough guide. Um, and, and as I say, I, I struggled uh, with that myself. 
Uh, <laughs> no, I don't know any Latin audiobooks. So dead languages, this is probably going to not be an easy thing to do for ancient Greek or um, or Latin. So no, nope, sorry, can't help. Uh, what do you think of Pomodoro, and can you combine it with your long uh, session learning? Uh, I think it can. Uh, I, one of the things I didn't mention was that uh, I did take breaks while I was doing this. So when I did the three or four hour bit, I did take a break from reading and listening. But I mean, I didn't uh, turn on a, an English TV show and watch that. Uh, I I tried to stay in the in the moment in in the immersion, um, but I did take a break. I just stopped for a little bit and you know went outside and had a bit of a walk around or something. Um, I think the Pomodoro technique is brilliant. I use it myself for other things, but I, I haven't used it in conjunction with this. But I think if you were if you were doing going to use Pomodoro, I would use it with the the things I said as, that were extras, the transcription, the translation stuff, and possibly the you know the um, pronunciation practice. That would be good. How do you keep motivated to go over the same material so often? Oh, this this is the painful bit, I tell you. This is really a nightmare. And it's the reason that I kept speeding up the narrator because it, you know, I've heard this so many times now that I'm just getting sick of it. Um, this, you sometimes, and I, one book I think I'd, I'd, I'd read, uh, what was it, Treasure Island. I just gave up. I just stopped. I just got sick of it. So, you know, this isn't a torture machine. If you if you don't like it and you're not enjoying it, just stop and move on to the next book, um, because there are lots of books that you can use. And you also might think about trying to, you know, uh, use shorter shorter books as well. So you not start with War and Peace, but you know, start with something uh, a bit easier and a bit shorter to 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 repeat on. What are your thoughts on the? Birkenbau method. I don't actually know what that is, so I'd be really interested if you if you want to contact me later and tell me what that is. So sorry, I can't expand on that. Is it better to study reading books or seeing films? Well, I've done a bit of both. Um, I like the listening and reading thing for books, mostly because I it's a longer format. Films. I'm not so keen on because it's 90 minutes and then basically the character ends, you, you know, you don't, there's no continuity. Um, television series, I think are probably better. Uh, if I was going to uh, do that, I, you'd probably do a television series. So I just recently watched from, cause I was on lockdown nine series of Seinfeld. Um, but if I'd have done that in French or Italian, they've been much more useful to me than watching like one Star Trek movie in French. So. 15 euro times 7 times 2 equals 2 and is going to get every Harry Potter book plus the auto book. What do you suggest? Well, I suggest you go to Levervox uh, and get the free stuff, uh, which is what I did. So, which is why I read Treasure Island. Um, and, uh, and, you know, so I was doing uh, some Treasure Islands and, and Dickens and things. And those have been read by volunteers in various languages. So you can get a lot of free stuff. You don't have to use Harry Potter. And like I say, you don't actually need an exact translation. You're only trying to use the reading part as a, as a sort of a prompt to get the gist of what's happening in the listening part. It's the listening part that's important. It's not the reading part. Um, but yeah, it, that, that's an expensive investment. But then again, I've probably invested at least that much in, in Asimil books, courseworks, Teach yourself, etc. So, how many languages have you learned using this method? A uh, nil. <laughs> um, I've tried to increase my intermediate language. Uh, I struggled. Uh, I, I would love to do this with Setswana, except you, your chances of finding an uh, um, uh, audiobook in Setswana in the UK is virtually nil. Um, so no chance of doing it that way. So if I was going to do it, it would have to be one of the big languages, you know, the figs, French, Italian, German, uh, Spanish, etc. cetera. Um, I planned to do it for uh, in Polish for, um, for this gathering, but I didn't do it. So I might do it for the next one. Uh, and the reason I did that is because I worked with a Polish fellow and he gave me 
actual physical books and lots of audio books um, that his wife used. And, you know, so he, he, he gave me Harry Potter um, and he gave me The Hobbit and he gave me some couple other books that I don't know because they're originally Polish. But, um, but I do plan to have a go at, at learning Polish using this method. And if you guys want to have a go, I'm, I'm really going to log onto the forum and tell me how you're doing. Uh, did you do some vocabulary work like gold list or flashcards to improve your reading? Right. So now I'm I'm doing intermediate work here. So I've got flashcards, bazillion of them for for Italian. Um, my problem and the reason that I wanted to do this as an intermediate user is my listening comprehension is not as good as my reading comprehension. So I'm quite happily read a book in French or read a book in Italian, no problem. Um, my problem is when a native speaker is speaking at me and and it, it, I'm not understanding what they're, I'm not taking on board what they're saying because they're, you know, it's, it's too difficult and I'm not understanding sort of rapid fire Italian. So my whole point of doing this was not uh, to increase my vocabulary, but to increase my listening comprehension. Now, I think if you were going to do uh, vocabulary work, you, you need to do something else like Anki decks or flashcards or gold lists, et cetera, um, to build up your vocabulary. But again, you're not doing this for the reading, you're doing it for the listening. I don't know. Um, I assume that the um, presenters will will send it, but I, I do have a Google Drive link, so I'll try and log on to the tandem thing later and, and post the link to my um, Google Drive where the presentation is. How many people speak Setswana? Which country or tribe, Botswana or other? Well, it's mostly in Botswana and South Africa, uh, the majority. I think there's about four and a half million native speakers, uh, possibly more. Um, but it's 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 actually quite a lot of people speak Setswana. Um, and, uh, but it, it's because Botswana was a, an English colony, most of them speak English as well. And so doing a language exchange is useless for me because I can't teach them anything they don't already know, so. Can I ask you as your accent of English? I'm from the UK and your accent seems really unique to my ears. Well, that's because I'm actually American, um, but I've lived here for 30 something years and I spent a couple years in Ireland as well. So I have one of these really messed up accents that people find difficult to identify. Right, I think we might have run out of questions or time, I'm not really sure. I think we've run out of questions. So basically, uh, I'm glad that you all came online today to watch my talk. And I hope you've picked up something from it. I'll try and get the presentation out as soon as I can. Uh, hopefully, I'll see you all next year live and in person. And uh, we can all go out and have a beer to drink in Poland. So thank you very much and have a nice day. <laughs>